going to do? I mean, I have this 16-year-old fantastic kid. She's uh, just wonderful. We were at school today uh, talking about college. And uh, I have a wife I've been with for 32 years. That's a, that's a great thing, wonderful person. She's my manager. Not always great. <laughs> she can kick my ass on a given day. Um, but um, uh, I'm going to keep playing and keep performing until I can't stand up. That's, that's it. I got nothing else I want to do because it gives me the most uh, uh, happiness uh, to be able to be up in, in front of the people on stage, singing songs, and performing. Not just singing, but laughing, having some fun, uh, and, and, and uh, really entertaining, and um, uh, taking it as far as you can take it, you know. Uh, uh, and I repeat, I'll be at the Highline Ballroom <laughs> on June 29th. It's almost sold out. Got a few days left. Have, have you been able to to um, support yourself fully from your art? Yes, I have. Uh, so, and, and what was your journey to that? I had a fantastic thing happen to me that's worth hearing. <laughs> <laughs> I was working on a song as part of an album in a studio. It was called the Record Plant at the time, uh, and I came out into the hallway by myself, and Gene Simmons came out. Now, me and Gene Simmons, we're, we're not really great close friends. Right? <laughs> but Gene said to me, that song you got there, what is that song? I said, well, it's, it's, it's called Matador, and, uh, uh, you know, it's uh, da -da -da -da. I said, it's, it's, it's kind of catchy. Yeah. A few days later, I come out again, and he comes out, same time, almost the same thing. He said, that song. That song, it's catchy. Record company hated the album. Literally, that's what they said. They hated it. And but the America, but the, but the, this is when this is when international became part of your repertoire. And should not just New York City or L.A. This is where you could reach out to the rest of the world. I went to Paris, and they said, "We know the American company." doesn't like the record, but we love the record. We just love it. We want to put out Bad Dream as the single. What do you think? I said, no. Matador is the same. <laughs> A month later, I went out on tour. Matador sold 25,000 singles the first week it came out. It's since sold over a million copies. It continues. It's a classic in Europe, especially in France and Germany, Holland, Belgium. So that's how I'm paying my daughter's education. It continues to get airplay, man. The one satanic song. It's all about Gene Simmons. <laughs> well, I just think it's that beautiful, like, that thing of, like, trusting, and then, like, you, it's like, I don't know, you, you, you needed the message, and so someone told it to you twice, and you're like, I got the message. <laughs> I could have said something else. It just worked. It was a, it was a beautiful thing, to say the least. It's amazing. Because it does, it's the, it's the single most important financial thing in our lives that continues to take care of us financially. You know, we get to pay, we get a $15,000 check in the mail, and that's going to pay such and such. We've got a kid going to school now, he's going to be going to college, that's going to pay. So th this is like, uh, you know, if you don't believe in God, you better start. <laughs> because, uh, I mean, this, this is a beautiful thing. But I just, I just want to say one, one last thing. Uh, one last thing if I can. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I just kept pushing. I've kept working all the time, you know. Not, you know, 
sometimes it's been like a pain, painful, difficult. I feel like you, you know, it's normal to uh, to uh, be disappointed and and and, uh, and 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 thrown by things that just are not working out at a given time. It's just normal to do that. I think if you don't have that experience, something's wrong. You have to have that experience, and then. Uh, you got to come back. You got to keep coming back. If it's, if it's in, if you if you have that passion, if you really want to get that next song that you've just written the lyrics for and the song, and you love the song, you want to try to get it out there. And that's I live for that. I live for my fans. My fans are up on stage. It's me and the fans. I'm up on stage singing my songs to the fans, and they like it. That's all that counts. Well, I really want to open the floor to, to you guys, because um, I, I feel like we've reached that natives are getting restless moment. But um, I, I did want to you know, take a little moment to do my own little bit of editorializing. I'm sorry, I, but you can't. <laughs> Foiled again. Rats. But uh, it's like when we started the Black Rock Coalition, like I said, almost 30 years ago. Um, we definitely wanted to have this very fervent conversation with the music industry about um, who black people could uh, or could not be. Um, and, you know, that was kind of like meeting one. And in kind of meeting two, we realized like we were a band of fools. You know, like this was our own little gypsy camp um, that was getting set up. And it really offered this opportunity for all these people with all these kind of no limits, all these no limit soldiers, I'll call them, you know, to kind of come together and, and kind of cross pollinate and, you know, spread their various ideas about emancipation and freedom with one another. And um, and it's still kind of amazing to me though that, you know, per Kamara's conversation about, um, you know, what happened when they went to see a record company that, um, it's like, wow, I'm still having the same damn conversation mm -hmm. like 30 years almost 30 years later, you know. So I just want to ask you guys, like, what do you think it is about what you do that strikes this terror and fear in the heart of people on the other side of, uh, of those deaths? You know, because as you said, it's not the audiences, you know what I mean? But there's definitely a power structure in the, in the music business which technology uh, has kind of leveled uh, to a certain degree, but those old ideas are still in place, and people's ability to kind of affect the way people think about a career is still in place too. Yeah. I think it's uh, it's more about identifying your advocates, yeah. because what you are saying and what I hear is that everybody has fans, or everybody maybe doesn't necessarily like the artist whole oof, but they like that one song, you know? <laughs> or you might not like, you might, there's something identifiable that, that they can find, and, and you really have to do the work and go through all the publicists and all the marketing companies and all the managers and all the lawyers and all the, you have to like get your team together and either put yourself in places Put yourself out there enough to be identified as, ah, I'm an advocate for that kind of person, or I'm a fan of yeah. that Absolutely. artist's work. Yeah. I recognize something resonates, what they're saying or what they're doing resonates in me, and then, so it's a thing of a kind of getting, pushing it into a, a, a point where it's like, I've done everything I can, or I've met everyone I can. You know, you, you hear Russell Simmons talking about, you know, when I got to the party, I met everyone in the room, and I went around and met everyone in the room. You have to just suck it up and go and, 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 and do it and push yourself out. So that's the, because it might not be that, the person who you wish it is. You know, you might not even be thinking about that, that person, but. Um, that's kind of my, find those advocates and identify them. And it can be very painful.